This video explains mining exploration to complement the MCA and Victorian Farmers Federation Land Access Guide, which informs landowners on their rights when mineral explorers seek access to their land. This video provides a short overview of exploration in Victoria from applying for a licence, data collection and community engagement with the main focus on the potential equipment used for on-ground works. In Victoria, one third of Victoria's landscape is exposed rocks. The other two thirds are under cover, so younger, younger rocks and sands and gravels and lavas obscure the basement geology that has all the, uh, where we think all the best minerals sit. And so we need techniques to be able to sort of look through this cover, such as the, uh, the drill rig here behind us and geophysics. The steps in the in the exploration process for us to go basically from the concepts that we have in our head uh, through to actually doing work on the ground involves a number of steps. Firstly, we sort of look at pre-existing sort of information around the area. So there might be government surveys that have been sort of uh, run through this area. It's a bit of a uh, detective job, really picking up this, uh, picking up the clues, going around, walking over the ground. Uh, trying to piece everything together to, to come up with a plausible story of why we think the minerals might be in a certain area and then from that we we set up sort of ways of testing those theories. Further exploration we might do if we see some positive results um, include some detailed structural mapping of the area so again um, it's a reconnaissance activity that is non-destructive um, before moving on to potentially a broader scale soil geochemistry uh, program to, to understand the size and extent of this gold mineralisation. The next steps then are to come out uh, in this particular area that we're in is covered. So we t generally tend to sort of use uh, shallow drilling techniques. So uh, this will drill little test holes into the ground and uh, from that we'll take samples and we'll send them, them away for our assay. Uh, we'll geologically log those to see sort of what rock types are there and from that um, we'll sort of see whether we can find anything of interest, any joy. Typical setup of the air core rig is uh, we've got the plastic laid out for the samples and then we've also got the uh, plastic inside the, uh, the sump rings to collect any water and uh, mass drill cuttings. Air core rig has three metre rods so each metre they put out a sample on the black plastic and we put a little bit of the chips that is from each metre into our chip trays and you show each metre going down the hole. So once we get through the hard rock, which is called basalt, I start sampling as well. So I sample each metre into a bag and we send that off to the lab and we find out exactly what's in it as well. We're very conscious that the, the farmers have to earn a living and uh, we uh, try to minimise our impact in doing our exploration. We're very mindful of where we go and what time. Uh, so, so whether it's a wet season, not to be able to go there because it's, it's too hard to get the rigs there. Um, and also this time of year being, being uh, December, January, uh, crops. So we need to wait sometimes uh, for them to be stripped to get access. The biosecurity considerations when working on, uh, on the farmer's properties, we have a standard set of uh, operating procedures which includes um, cleaning all the vehicles but one of the most important things is checking with the, the farmers themselves as to their protocols, uh, what they use, what, what their expectations are and making sure that, that uh, our procedures adhere as a minimum to, uh, to their standards. Initially we might have a, a two-person team that would come out and sort of introduce ourselves to the farmers before we even do any work sort of in the area. Uh, that can also take uh, the form of phone calls, letter drops, things like that. But in this example behind us we have two drillers, a driller and his offsider, and we'll have a, a geologist and an offsider, so four people and maybe we might have a, the supervisor might call in once or twice a week. A land access agreement is a, is a, a means that uh, we, we seek to get consent to operate on the properties within our exploration licences. So uh, for private land, 
we would go and introduce ourselves to the, to the farmers, the areas of interest. We would explain what we propose to do, how long that's going to take, and all the steps involved in that. With that, there is uh, compensation uh, for, uh, that we, we normally pay. So this rig is a uh, Sandvik D810. It is a diamond drilling rig. It is mainly designed to pull out core samples so the geologist can then get a feel of what the ground is like, what minerals and fault zones, basically clays and different types of ground there is. At the moment we are 440 metres deep. We'll be going down to roughly about 700 metres. It's to be determined by the geologists. So that they'll have a look at the core, get the information if they want a little bit deeper to get just that bit more information. This is a diamond drill bit. It is what's on the end of our rods. Basically we'll have all our rods up and we'll go, be going at a certain angle that's determined by the geologists. And this will be drilling down, producing a core sample that will go up through the drill bit and into an inner tube. We're drilling very close to residential area. So we've got to be mindful of how much noise we are making. We try to maintain good drilling technique to minimise the amount of uh, rod pulling we've got to do. So that's pulling all the rods out and hitting the rods and basically anything that makes noise, we try to minimise that with better drilling techniques. This drill shed we've got behind us is designed by Deep Core Drilling. This was developed about five years ago. One of the key design elements of this shed is the baffled walls. So the, the walls are specifically designed to really keep that noise down. So as you can see, we're, we're standing here behind this drill rig and you can barely hear it. Um, another key design of this was to keep the site small. So the drill rig inside the shed is, is reasonably big, but we designed the shed to keep the site small so that we have a really small footprint at the site. And, and outside the shed, we have bunded funded areas and tanks to contain all of our hydrocarbons and all of our fresh water. So the main aim of that is to leave no imprint behind on the land and reduce any potential for spills. The process following the, uh, the drilling of holes out in the field is to deliver the drill core back to a, back to a central area. And uh, that's our core yard here. We uh, get the core laid out uh, in consecutive order and uh, from that the geologists can come through and log it. As a geology technician we get the core in from the drillers and then we prep it to be logged for the geologists here and then once they've finished logging it we prep the samples to be ready for the lab by cutting it up and putting it in sample bags and getting it ready to go off. To apply for an exploration licence uh, we need to have a, a geological concept of why we are in the area uh, the type of minerals we're likely to try and find in this area. We uh, then uh, apply to earth resource regulation. We put in an application. We have to demonstrate that we've got the technical know-how, that we're, um, we've got the ability to be able to run the programs. Also the financial uh, uh, know-how that we've got um, the required or requisite um, uh, funding to be able to do these programs. That license is then accepted either accepted or rejected by Earth Resource Regulation. We then advertise. Um, that goes through a, a period of um, where the public has a chance to uh, object uh, to, to any of uh, the applications. We then address those. The expiration licenses that we work under generally grants us uh, five years and then we can apply for a five year extension if we're sort of finding um, um, encouraging mineralisation. Uh, if we're successful in uh, getting a mineral deposit, then the next step would be moving to a, a mining licence. A mining licence would require us generally to, to have an environmental effects statement done. This site was rehabilitated roughly 18 months ago. As you can see, all the natural grass has grown back quite well. We've got a pretty extensive rehabilitation process, so pre, mid and post rehabilitation, which is our stage three sign off. It's done with the landholder. We're here today after about 18 months. You can see by the time we leave, you can't notice there was a drill here at all. 